how yeah. the fuck is that a meme that like people <laughs> of our generation know but it's like it's legit like yes can you yes. imagine finding porn in the woods and that being like a sacred holy experience <laughs> like the, <laughs> it happened it happened and you're yeah. just like yes <laughs> jackpot <laughs> Welcome to What's My Thesis. I'm your host, Javier Proenza. Every week, my guests and I share the answers we found to the questions we have. Join us as we explore and expand our worldview and ask what's my thesis. And today, my guest is Doug DeMancos. Uh, we are Instagram friends, but it sounds like you just moved out here. And um, I think that you should definitely hang out at the Bendix, it sounds like. Uh, yes, you, I need to go. There? I've not. No, I've seen it, uh, seen it from the road. And oh, it's yeah? pretty, pretty impressive to look at from the outside with that big rooftop sign uh, yeah but i haven't been up there yet well it's a it's a kind of a special thing because i don't i've people say that this happens elsewhere i've never seen it uh just like it's one art complex it's one building that is like 11 floors tall yeah. i've seen art complexes complexes before but never like where you take an 11 foot never so covid unfriendly <laughs> 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 where you take an elevator up uh 11 floors to get like and you're just hopping from places but it is really one of the easiest places to socialize and, and meet people out here. Not that you don't know people. It's just that we don't know the same people. And I'm like, oh, right. if you want to know the people that I know, just come here. Right. They're super accessible. Right. So, right. yeah. I've, I've, some people I follow on Instagram have events there. I just need to yeah. get out to one of those. Yeah, for sure. And as uh, I'm Monta Vista, but there's like, there's so many. Or I'm part of Monta Vista. I'm not all of Monta Vista. I am. <laughs> what's my thesis, though? Um, but yeah. Right. It's a it's a pretty cool space. I definitely recommend everybody check it out and uh, and come out because the last the last Saturday was actually the craziest it's been in a while. Wow. Or maybe not last Saturday because last Saturday was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> the ninth was pretty wow. wild. But I will definitely let you know when I think it's like gonna be a big one again because mm -hmm. that is the night to th those are the fun nights to go. You don't even need to leave the building. And since you're like walking, you may feel inclined to get a little bit more drunk than you should. <laughs> so you might want to Uber. <laughs> but yeah. All right. So you, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so I'm a visual artist, um, newly transplanted in LA since 2018. Yeah. Um, happy to be here. Feel very inspired here. And um, I've really been doing a lot of new things with my artwork since I've been here. Um, uh, previously, I've been a graphic designer so i've done a lot of stuff uh throughout my peak uh years uh in graphic design and art direction Are and you stuff in your like decline that now? <laughs> <laughs> yes well i'm over that hill over that big over that big hill so um the or ascension hill. my ascension to to, to so, the next thing so uh graphic design it's interesting i i actually kind of see that now a little bit that there's um there's a lot of elements that I think would translate from that kind of training, but you're also a painter, right? So yes, yes. That's specifically mm -hmm. what you focus on. Do you do sculpture or anything else? Um, you know how people are these days. Yes, they're not. Um, they're not faithful to one, <laughs> one discipline. Exactly. Um, painting is is where it's at for me. Painting and drawing. I like to draw as well. So yeah. Um, a lot of my paintings come out of my sketchbooks, which is you know I draw in either pencils or markers usually, mm -hmm. and then um translate them to paintings um i do have some interest in in motion graphics i i may find a way to work some of that in in the future it's something so like I've been animation about. stuff um yeah or doing some kind of installation with projections and, oh okay and, and my work and some animations like digital animations superimposed over top of some of my images oh okay so like Something. maybe have a face wink at you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I always love to come up with the, the lamest <laughs> right. suggestions. And I also see some painted shoes here. We got some back here in the back. Right. And, uh, Cosmo Sport. Yes. Is that a brand that you came up with or is that um, shoes that well, you painted? Actually, um, I, I sell goods on consignment at Lux DeVille and Echo Park. And um, uh, Oscar, uh, the owner of Lux DeVille, gave me this box of dead stock shoes. So these are actually from the eighties. Oh, and what? Um, yes. And, uh, and they're really nice fabric. They're like, I think they're linen. <laughs> I was painting them. I'm like, this isn't canvas. This is nicer than that. Wow. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm customizing stuff and I, uh, I, I sell my stuff on consignment there. So I do a lot of customized fashion stuff, some vintage, some new stuff, some industrial coveralls and other things like that. Uh -huh. And, um, 
So yeah, that's one of one of the things I just finished. How how long have you been selling work and stuff? It seems because I do, I I do get the sense that you like from our conversations pre this mm -hmm. that you are comfortable selling and that you have experience selling stuff. Uh, I'm mostly conceptual, so most of my shit, like, I'm just making the transition into being like, hey, fuck grad school, or I mean, not that grad school, but fuck, fuck my, my BFA, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna sell out, <laughs> not, not that you're a sellout, uh -huh. but I'm just saying, like, how long yes. have you been do engaged in that? Well, back in the, uh, back in the early 2000s in San Francisco, I did have uh, a gallery and a, a small store. That, yeah, that you ran, or you were represented? That, that I ran, okay. so I managed it and, and uh, opened it, and, um, so I sold a lot of stuff on consignment from local artists. So I had mm -hmm. a store in the front that, that was more functional goods, like T-shirts and bags and stuff like that, that people made, local people made. Mm -hmm. And then there was a gallery in the back that uh, had a couple rooms, and I had rotating monthly art shows there. So I had that for about four years. Um, so that really got me in the groove of kind of How long ago was selling this? and art. And uh, that was in the early 2000s. Early 2000s. Okay. Yeah, Were so. you still a graphic designer at the time? I was. So I was freelancing at night and then I was running the shop during the day. Cool. And uh, most of the time I was working behind the cash register on my freelance work. And this was, <laughs> but, um, this was not in San Francisco though. Right? That was in San Francisco. Oh, okay. Yes. It, mm -hmm. okay. On Market Street. Yeah. It was called National Product. National Product. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, I just imagine the rents being so insane there. Like it may, it, I'm, I'm inferring that you are a good <laughs> businessman and maybe I should pick your brain about stuff. <laughs> um, sure. Anytime. But uh, luckily that was right at the at the time of the dot com collapse so rents were pretty oh. reasonable when oh, yeah. i got that deal you know and, what um, i was thinking about moving to san francisco back then too so yeah. I, that makes sense mm -hmm. now it just seems like <laughs> insane yeah. oh i can't imagine now yeah. yeah the place is a nail salon now oh really so, <laughs> yeah. i bet you they make uh great nail art though <laughs> you know they probably Continu do. your spirit is still there <laughs> you've yeah. infected the building yeah <laughs> Well, cool, man. Well, um, usually around this time, well, first of all, I want to ask you about your shirt. Oh. <laughs> I eat your skin? <laughs> yeah, this is like one of those like drive-in movie double features. I got it at Amoeba. I love it. Oh, nice. It's one of it's my favorites. It's a great shirt. Yeah. Are you a huge horror fan? I am a tremendous, okay, tremendously huge horror fan. Because you seem pretty well adjusted. I've been in your apartment <laughs> and it doesn't look terrifying. <laughs> is there heads in the fridge? Or <laughs> um, Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the one place you haven't checked. Yes, it's the one place I haven't checked. <laughs> they're, watch, they're all jello shots shaped <laughs> like heads. It's going to be disappointing. Yep. Uh, cool, man. So, all right. So, around this time, I usually start asking about topics. Okay. Uh, what, uh, what are we dealing with today? Um, um, let's maybe talk about media. Just Like media in, like, in what sense? Um, well, it's, it's something that really informs my work, and it's something that... Uh, it comes through in my work often. Um, you know, some of my earliest memories were like, you know, being in front of the television or um, being exposed to those type of messages. Um, and it's one of those things that sticks in my mind. It's some of my earliest memories were like of telev television commercials. It's a very um, mm. what? Would you, are thing. you Gen X? Or yes. you, mm -hmm. Gen X. Yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. want to insult you by implying you were a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Gen X for sure. Gen X. Yeah. Okay, so you grew up some seventies. Uh, yes. So you yeah. experienced the a lot of seventies. A lot of seventies. Okay. Yeah. Like so, uh, I was super young in the seventies. Yeah. So. Yeah, because for me that era was the eighties, so it's a little bit out of my grasp the way that my experience is to kids. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. That was Nixon era, right? <laughs> Uh, yes. That, when did that he when, when did he resign? Um, well, that's why it seems so dark, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was um, the mid seventies, like mid to late seventies. To me, the seventies is elusive because all of the people that I grew up listening to, like uh, what's his name from Nirvana, Kurt Cobain, mm -hmm. they were all very like all of the nineties things that made me a teenager right. are like what kids are reacting to the nineties now are doing. I mm -hmm. was reacting like it was a, it was seventies nostalgia. Right. right? Yes, and exactly. Then, and then there was also a lot like in the early, early nineties kind of before 
Well, I guess Nirvana was going. There was a, the the mainstream thing was the summer of love. All the boomers were getting old in the in the marketing mm -hmm. world, right? Yeah. And then they were like, "Hey guys, remember yeah. how awesome the seventy the sixties <laughs> were? We were all fucking." <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, those things always recycle. So, and, you, well, what got you into graphic design? Because that's um, I, th I think that that I think that art school kind of makes you a little bit snooty towards being commercial and selling stuff absolutely which, does yeah which but i think you're much better off because <laughs> it sounds like you're doing okay <laughs> uh, um well yeah that's definitely true i mean when, when you're in art school i uh, i studied design when i was in art school so um i've always been very interested and it cycles back to the media thing that i was talking about before i always loved catalogs and typography and marketing images and, and comic books i used to love the small ads in the back of the comic books yeah yeah for like um, the x-ray specs and yes stuff like that absolutely it's like the, the, those type of images i have tons of them in my sketchbook and i there's a whole like cultural them. reference the the what's it called sea monkeys that's yes. like uh, entirely <laughs> from comic books yes yes <laughs> so that type of thing has always kept me interested in graphic design so you know i've always been uh, very enthusiastic about type and marketing and advertising that paraphernalia vintage stuff um has always been appealing to me so yeah so you're um, from the era where we didn't have porn on the internet i'm, I'm picking <laughs> <laughs> not at all it was much harder to find back then did you did you uh do i i know that you are a gentleman that likes gentlemen were you yeah. into i use there there's no like lingerie section for guys <laughs> is there like was um, it, did you like, oh my God, look at this dude in boxers <laughs> or in briefs. Is that, was that hot? Uh, yeah. yeah like okay, uh, okay. we had some JC Penny catalogs, I okay. guess, you know, <laughs> just fucking digging into your dirt. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Hey, <laughs> no, but the catalogs, that catalogs, it, that was a thing, right? Like, um, before you, before oh, totally. You, before you ever discovered porn in the woods. Yeah. I think that happens to everybody. I mean, it's like, uh, not anymore. This is like, we're, this is a bygone yeah. era. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Porn in the woods. That was another thing too. You definitely used to find some porn in the woods. How yeah. the fuck is that a meme that like people of our generation know, but it's like, it's legit. Like, yes. Can you yes. imagine finding porn in the woods and that being like a sacred, holy experience? <laughs> like the, <laughs> it happened. It happened. And you're yes. just like, yes, <laughs> jackpot. <laughs> Whereas now it's like, I can't, I need a break from porn. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wonder what the kids do now that are like underage. Like, I mean, I'm sure they have access to it. Yeah, it's probably they not find good. ways to sneak it's around. <laughs> probably like they probably are, are, are already going into like the extreme porn just because they're desensitized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. But yeah, okay. So then, so then advertising. What? What? Um, I always feel, say that like art is definitely a form of communication, right? Because it's visual language. So, um, what? What? Like, what did you do? Like album covers? What kind of stuff were you? Because you said you were freelance, right? Mm -hmm. So, were you doing magazine spreads? Um. I did, um, I'm trying to think how I actually started. So at the time I started graphic design, like, uh, desktop publishing was kind of a new thing. So, uh, that was a, that was a big thing, like learning to do all this stuff that kind of, I was trained traditionally to do, to learn how to do it on the computer. Oh yeah. yeah, um, yeah. so like in design uh, and whatnot. Right. Yeah. So, you know, my, my start out in, um, graphic design was a lot of kind of smaller scale desktop publishing type stuff like copy copy places and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, until eventually I got some jobs in um, publishing I worked for a uh, uh, gay newspaper weekly in San Francisco called the San Francisco Sentinel that's uh, a gay newspaper uh, it just doesn't it, I, I figured it would be called something a little bit more <laughs> Yeah, it was. There were two. There were two big weeklies. Is it and run that's by after. like Gay Republic? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it might be. He was we a, want he him was, taken seriously. Uh, he was a cowboy. He was a cowboy. Uh, yeah. Okay. gay cowboys. I mean, I mean, I guess that's a bigger thing than we knew until yeah. that movie came out. Yeah, <laughs> one of my yeah. favorite uh, South Park uh, things is uh, when the they go to Sundance and there's a movie about two. We're just a couple of gay cowboys eating pudding. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I don't know if that was a reference to that movie or not. But. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> well, cool. So then, what? What? Tell me about some '70s commercials, because I think that that's that nostalgia for commercials. It's a weird thing because I hate advertising, mm -hmm. but I love old commercials because yeah. they're such a, like you know, like in the '80s when you you know, like there's a that commercial with uh, the Sprite commercial with a guy that's like transitioning and trying to be like it's a, it's a bu it was the sprite campaign in early in the 90s mm -hmm. and the guy's like buffy right and then he has the mm -hmm. boom box he just keeps morphing into these different uh. characters and he has a boom box and he becomes a rich white guy with a tennis thing which was was popular in <laughs> wow. the 80s and so all the ads in the 80s i feel had sort of that like hey aren't we cool rich white people <laughs> yes yes mm -hmm. and then uh, i know that aesthetic all the way yeah and then yeah. i feel like in the 90s that was that commercial was sort of like trying to shy away from that like making fun of that which right. was like the identity that had been right. for so long right it was like a reaction the, to like yeah yeah was everything punk. was luxurious in the 80s and then you had to get grungy again in the 90s yeah and then it turned then i think grunge was about apathy but like then they were like you know what let's let's hop on this hip-hop shit <laughs> yeah much easier to commercialize rather than a fucking guy whining about his life yeah yeah absolutely um but yeah so uh talking about the commercials uh uh so one of the things like saturday afternoon like saturday morning cartoons was something that i was way into when i was a kid what what, so, what, what kind of shows were on uh scooby-doo Scooby Doo, okay. Uh, scooby Doo was it for me like was there any and, this, was this the era of spider-man cartoon um that i remember okay I, what else Sco was on scooby-doo was was a huge highlight uh land of the lost okay that was amazing <laughs> <laughs> i've never still never seen the film remake I, I need to see that it was actually kind of fun but also kind of horrible the one with the, <laughs> uh what's it called not adam mckay but the will ferrell and the the guy from <laughs> yeah I I it doesn't who, matter yeah, i don't yeah. think anyone cares anyway <laughs> but yeah um like Saturday morning cartoons and just like all the like serials. Like I remember serial commercials, um, this, this really haunting light bright commercial, which was a toy. I don't know if mm -hmm. you're familiar with that has the pegs and you put in the screen. It was back. But, it, it's um, back because of, uh, uh, the Netflix show, the, um, the Netflix eighties nostalgia show. Oh, Stranger yeah, Things. Yeah, yeah. They, the last mm -hmm. season they just, used uh, one. yeah, they like ripped so, it from oh, a kid to use it. Wow. Yeah. I wonder if they showed the commercials on that. I haven't seen the later seasons of that. It's but, a, uh, it's, it's fine. Uh, it's it really only like that show it's okay mm -hmm. it's just serotonin for your nostalgic centers <laughs> <laughs> absolutely like in terms of in terms of writing it's fine it's not bad it's not good mm -hmm. it's just it's 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 entertaining mm -hmm. but it does something to you where while you're watching it yes like because i still haven't finished the last episode and because uh, it's like a two-hour one of mm -hmm. the last season i'm just like ugh. <laughs> but then when i'm watching it i'm like oh yeah it has all these references you know mm -hmm. so all right so then 70s like what were you, you were uh, were you a latchkey kid were you were, um, like, how were you too young to be a latchkey kid probably too young yeah so then what like was uh the tricks rabbit still fighting with the like was he still getting uh trying <laughs> tricks are for kids yeah it, yeah that is yeah like that was old, there that was there. How, yeah. Honeycomb Hideout was that a thing in the seventies or no? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I remember Tra that. Man, wow, God, you're staples. good with the commercials. Well, they're staples of like my childhood too. But I'm just yeah. amazed that that they like that they were still do you know because to me I to me like the seventies is might as well be like brand X you know which is mm -hmm. I know it's like from the fifties right like mm -hmm. when they would in the old commercials they would be they wouldn't say the actual name of them. Of yeah. the of competitor, mm -hmm. <laughs> they would be like brand yeah. X. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, right. Yeah, or the leading brand. The yes. leading brand. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, love that. Uh, another thing I remember from those commercials too were um, elaborate toy commercials, like you know, for action toys. Yeah. Like, and you'd be like, "Oh my god, where did they get this set? Like, look at that dirt. Look at you know, they had yeah. this like amazing set for these toys, and like you know." run the cars through it and like it was just insane like no like and they're the playing outdoors which i yeah. never did with my toys because right. i didn't want to lose mm -hmm. them or anything right but like it's just it looks like so much fun yeah were you into gi joe's and shit like that yeah yeah i had gi joe's i love that yeah six million dollar man that was action figures yeah i had oh, that right. yeah uh, those and then the, you were of the generation for the star wars stuff uh yeah oh yeah there, one of the of biggest stuff, marketing yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah i was like i think it was in like seventh or eighth grade when star wars came out so yeah yeah how do you, perfect how do you age feel, for that how do you feel about it now 
I, I still like it. I get yeah. a kick out of it. Yeah. Do you, still, but have I, you watched any of the new stuff? Uh, yeah, I've watched some of it. I'm, you know, I'm not a diehard, but you know, yeah, it's like if I can get to it, I'll, I'll go see it. Yeah, and there's a I whole. I think I saw, didn't see the last one. Even though we are the or or our generations are, because I was alive when uh, the some of them were born mm -hmm. uh, were born <laughs> those movies were born <laughs> uh but like yeah there's a generation of kids that fucking know that shit so much oh my god they, yeah i know and the story goes on and on and on it's uh hard to keep track of all that it's like yeah and it's just like kind of <laughs> like the last three movies were kind of uh, yeah you know and then like it was it's just funny to watch two directors beef <laughs> be yeah. like fuck your movie sucked now your movie sucked <laughs> yeah Although i haven't seen the last one mm -hmm. but if i'm comparing force awakens to uh the rain johnson one i think the rain johnson one's better even though it has massive problems mm -hmm. but cool man so then so like tell me a little bit more of of, of uh about like just interest in art kind of how you got into the transition between graphic design and when you decided that you could just be like an art artist did, um, when you were graphic designing uh, did you mm -hmm. consider yourself an artist i did uh when i was in art school um i made a tremendous effort to take a very heavy load of fine arts classes because i was very interested in fine art mm -hmm. so um in addition to the design and i knew that i wanted to try to move in a direction of being a graphic designer for a career um, but I always knew that I was, you know, my heart was in the art and um, I always wanted to keep my hand in that. So I took a lot of photography classes when I was in art school, a lot of painting classes and a lot mm -hmm. of drawing classes. Um, in fact, I think I had a, a double minor in pit painting and photography. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did a cross registration semester with the San Francisco Art Institute where I wasn't in my major for design at all. Mm -hmm. So that one semester that I was in San Francisco, I just focused on fine art. So, um, uh, my parents had the wrong kid, man. They, <laughs> they wish I could have just functioned like you. Like, come on, graphic design. I'm like, it's so not. It it is a different skill, but it, I'm almost fascinated by how. I also think it's interesting that like, um, artists struggle so much with like calling themselves an artist. You know, mm -hmm. and maybe because you were able to make living off of it <laughs> yeah you didn't have that like block o over having like it's almost like um not that it's not as dramatic as coming out but mm -hmm. it is like it, it it's like maybe closer to like the realization that you that there is something there that like you know because it's also not normal to be an artist right yeah yeah absolutely i mean there's yeah. i know when i told my mother that i was going to art school she was freaking out really so yeah wow my parents were maybe a little too supportive and not 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 very focused on me learning how to be practical. <laughs> I'm uh, like, now I'm like, depending on my younger sister, I'm like, Hey, <laughs> can you help me with my resume? And she's like better than everybody else. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So cool, man. So then what, what, uh, what, what kind of stuff interests you in art? What, like, what, uh, what is your main focus? Um, well, like back, back in my art school years, um, uh, I was very interested in abstraction way back in the eighties when I was in art school. And, um, uh, I had a really fantastic, like abstract drawing teacher that really had a big impact on me. So I, I still feel that there's a lot of, uh, elements of abstraction in my, in my work. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really liked the connection to, to graphic design layout at the time too, like just kind of the geometric structure of it all and the, the stuff that I was doing in abstract art at the time. Um, so those kind of things, I think, really hold the foundation of what's going on in my work. And there, there's still a lot of abstract space in my work. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. I use a lot of, uh, I use a lot of like appliances and technology as as objects uh, that can kind of you know look like um, objects or even like buildings or some kind of space that you don't quite understand. And um, you know, I, I really think that's a foundational uh, part of my work. Um, yeah, I also see that there's like some flatness, but then there's also depth in a very um um not not depth in that there's like th three dimensionality or perspective mm -hmm. in it, but a lot of layering, right? Mm -hmm. More now, I was going to say kind of like Asian prints, but in there they use a little bit more of like the high and low 
yeah. of that. Where mm-hmm. as over here, it kind of plays into that, but I don't think you're necessarily playing with that that much, right? It's more objects in front of each other mm-hmm. that are not correct to scale or something like that. Like it, it is an interesting um, way of throwing you through like kind of a loop, right? Mm-hmm. Like I do like. Um, Absolutely. I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of drawing in that way where. Like, cause, cause, because there's like the, the, um, the graphic, the graphicality of like the figures and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, I, I like that. And that, that, that they're flat. I like that. There still is a sense of space and yeah. a sense of confusing space. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I, I, <clears throat> I really get, I really love that aspect of my work. I really like, uh, messing with the space and kind of not quite understanding, um, what it is and the, and the, the layering idea I, I love. I mean, I, I think about uh, music sometimes, you know, when I think of that layering idea, just different tracks or different, different mm-hmm. parts, like kind of layered on top of each other, all making a different contribution to the whole. Yeah. And um, uh, something I think about often. Um, another thing I think about is uh, like a set and, the like a, a theater set mm-hmm. and then the action of the characters um it's, it's something a- i think about often when i do my work too and i think of i think of the sets as more of the kind of abstract past of my work mm-hmm. and uh, the figurative kind of suggested narrative part of the objects as kind of the action or um, yeah i was gonna say there is um there it's not uh, even though painting is often considered pretty narrative, I, I, I don't think there's necessarily, or I don't see necessarily a direct narrative other than the relationship between stuff. Like, so mm-hmm. when you said suggestive narrative, mm-hmm. I think it's a little bit more akin to like photography and whatnot. Mm-hmm. It, did, did you, uh, you said you studied photography and painting as a minors? Yes. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. one did you like, you, you, you just decided, did you stop taking pictures because every, <laughs> everybody takes pictures now? Um, <laughs> Cause that's kind of what I did. <laughs> I still, <laughs> I still take pictures like crazy. I, I love yeah. taking pictures with okay. my camera, especially now that, now that the uh, smartphones have come into my life. Yeah, it's yeah. Like my albums just go on and on. I can't even remember the things I took pictures of and I kind of use it as a sketchbook and then I can never find things. Cause yeah, like, yeah. what month was that? <laughs> yeah. That's a disaster. Yeah. You definitely so, have to keep on that. Yeah. I love taking photography and I love I, one of the, one of the biggest things I trip on in photography is composition. I just love mm. composing photographs and like uh, something I'm very into And Los Angeles has so many opportunities. Like there's so many times I'm actually driving my car <laughs> and I'm like, trying to operate my camera at the same time to get a picture of a, a sign or something that is really intriguing to me. I got flipped off one time for that. <laughs> yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah. I kind of deserved it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's like, bro, it's LA. Yeah. You got to fucking live with traffic, man. Yeah. Like, right. you know, someone's going right. slow because they're taking a picture. Right. You can also fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And most of the time the traffic's so slow. It's really easy to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like, I, I do love the people that just freak out when it, you, you don't hit the gas right the second the light changes. Yes. I'm like, God damn, bro. Oh. Where, where are you going? <laughs> yeah, I know. So, all right. So then what you moved here, you bis- you've been just in the San Francisco area since, since before you moved here? Um, yeah, since the, uh, since the early 90s, I was in San Francisco. Okay. That's when I moved there from Cleveland, which is where ha- I went to art school. How come you don't hate L.A.? Um, why aren't you snooty what's, the fuck, what's wrong with you you're a defective uh you know, san franciscan <laughs> you know when i discovered the east side i kind of fell in love with la i was oh, like you okay. know i could live here do you think that maybe the, the most of the san franciscans have only been to the west side <laughs> <laughs> well you know what when i was younger that's where we always went we always went to west hollywood you know? yeah, and yeah it was like that was all i knew and i liked it but you know it wasn't you know i i never really felt like god i want to be here or yeah, you know? yeah. um I kind of felt like, you know, Santa Monica Boulevard is just another version, like a much larger version of the Castro in San Francisco. Although the Castro uh, seems cooler. <laughs> At least a little bit more rundown. Yeah. Santa Monica. Santa Monica. That's a little more quaint. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on what part of the Santa Monica Boulevard, too. Mm-hmm. Like when, I, when I'm when i swiping and I see that someone's in Santa Monica, I'm like, well, it's probably not going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm much more East LA, man. <laughs> Even though I'm not from here. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But yeah, I mean, you know, discovering some things like, uh, I'm trying to think like uh, 
La Luz de Jesus, where I just had some art in a group show. Uh, that that place is amazing. What's that? Uh, La Luz de Jesus, the gallery, mm. and uh, it's on Hollywood Boulevard. And oh, okay. I guess you'd call that area Los Feliz. And uh, that that place is amazing. It's just a giant uh, store in the front that has all kinds of interesting oddities and novelties and books. And it's huge. It's like a mm-hmm. superstore of that type of thing. Uh, a lot of uh, outsider art um, books and uh, that they feature as well in the gallery in the back. And they have uh, two large rooms, gallery mm-hmm. in the back. And um, But that once I discovered that place, I was like, oh, yeah, I could totally... Oh, yeah. I could totally like it, that's live the, here and uh, there's just so much to be inspired by here. That's the crazy thing about here. I don't even know that place and I'm, I consider myself somewhat embedded, oh, but there's so many different little scenes that you can get into. Absolutely. Um, which is like why I enjoy the podcast because then I'm like, oh wait, this is a whole new group of people I, I, I don't know at all. Yeah. <laughs> and I can start uh, networking with them. Yeah. But yeah, the... the that that is a crazy thing. Is is San Francisco? I would imagine its scene is like a little bit more centralized because it's just seven by seven miles. So mm-hmm. right, like it's much more manageable. Uh, that, yes, it is. Yeah, that's why I was saying right. that. Like, um, like San Francisco would probably be the only other place that I would imagine has a place like the Bendix that has like a big building with art in it. But it's also like it would be untenable because it would be so fucking expensive in rent, mm-hmm. right? For all these ad- artist run spaces right. to exist in there. Right. There always are those type of spaces in San Francisco and in the East Bay, Oakland, and yeah. uh, around there. They're kind of moving. Uh, well, actually, one just closed in Oakland that was yeah. called American Steel. That was amazing. A lot of Burning Man people had stuff in there and giant yeah. sculptors that did giant metal works and stuff that were amazing. Um, they just, I guess, they're going to tear that down, but you could. You could drive cars in this place. It was so huge. And, wow. you know, there was like a little Western town inside of there. It was so gigantic. Um, but, uh, yeah, I heard that close. And that's really sad. It was such an epic, like, yeah. old factory, too, from the outside when you were driving by. Yeah, yeah. I'm always curious about the art scene over there. Because there's def- I definitely know a bunch of people from, uh, what's the, the art, art institute? Um, uh, San Francisco Art Institute. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's they uh, have like a, I was at looking actually for the abbreviation SSI uh, or SFIA. SFIA. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and um or AI. AI. Yeah, AI. AI. And then there's also the CCA, which is the California College of Art, which I they merged uh in the later years that I was uh there. They used to be separate colleges, but back when I went to SF mm-hmm. AI. Um But it, then it was separate. So, so would you consider your space like in the vein of like what we call artist run spaces over here? It sounds like it. Uh, it could, yeah, but they move around, you know, there, there, there were some in San Francisco proper. Back no, I in meant the, your space, the, oh. the, the, the gallery that you ran. Oh, since you were selling it on consignment, would you consider it a, a, a artist run space or I, I don't know. Yes, I would. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Cause I there's pers- so many different models. Right. I just didn't want to assume that you were like, yeah, I would say, yeah, it was definitely an artist run space. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. What was it called again? National product. What uh, what challenges have you experienced running a space like that? Like um, it, <laughs> the stress of the bills. God, that was the worst part. Really, of it the all. bills mostly. The artists yeah. were assholes sometimes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we have a very different experience. Yeah, in the there art were world. there were definitely some situations like that too. Can you, um, without but, naming names, can you share some drama? Um, let's see, <laughs> wow. Um, I just, I, one, one issue was, was pricing. Uh, you know, a lot of times I always told the artists when they were having a show, it's like, I want to have some affordable pieces in the show. Yeah. And then occasionally people would come hang their show and like nothing affordable. Yeah. So, you know, that was, that was something I, that, uh, was tense sometimes. Um, yeah, I would, I would probably say that was probably the biggest hurdle or the thing really? that like, God or, it. or just maybe, you know, maybe editing stuff it. out that people like, if I didn't like something and I edited something out, people, you know, would be offended by. I like that. By that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah curate, artists are, are, are an interesting group, yeah. but nobody is as willing to talk shit about them as I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Because right. I've had it up to year with you, right. motherfuckers. No, I'm kidding. Turn the camera off. I'll let it fly. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, no. Well, no. I mean, it's fine. We don't. No. That's why I said don't name names. I just like the stories of the of the drama. I've shared most of them here. I'll tell you them off of off air, so we don't. But I I thought we could add to the the pot mm-hmm. of, uh, of horror stories. Yeah. Uh, my main thing is that they're a fun group, but they can 
can also be kind of entitled a, yeah. a little bit. And I think that a lot of that comes from the fact that most of us have to have like, or a, a lot of the art scene has a lot of like extra mm -hmm. support. They're coming from privilege. I know there's a lot of people like Sam yeah. Sharp. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I didn't want to presume for you mm -hmm. what situation you came out of. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, you know, I think that kind of mentality, when mm -hmm. you have a scene that's made up of a lot of people that have right. had some privilege. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a, it, it makes for an interesting cocktail. Yeah. Yeah, it can. Absolutely. And, you know, my experiences with artists, they were just such, such a range. They were all over the place. So I had many, many shows. I had four years of shows there. So no. and they were monthly. So some of them were group shows. So that was a, that's a lot of artists to deal with. And then I had all the consigners in the front part of the store as well. And you so. never, you never <laughs> like, I'm not going to work with you. <laughs> um, you never yeah. had that happen. I've had that happen. Well, I mean, there were people whose work I didn't like that oh, yeah, I would yeah, never yeah, even yeah. let in, but yeah. Uh, but I would find ways to like, you know, just smooth it over. Yeah. How do you do that? Um, I don't think you're good for this space. <laughs> yeah, I would, I, I, I would say stuff like that. I would just say, you know, I have kind of a focused goal with my curation and I just don't feel that what you're doing. And I don't like to me. show shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Well, what yeah. was the focus? I mean, I'm assuming there was some, um, some sort of it, focus. Yeah, it had, a, you know, like uh, I've talked about the media stuff. So a lot of uh, kind of Americana um, advertising type stuff. I have mm -hmm. a ton of that kind of stuff. A lot of Americana, kitschy. Are you a um, big Mary, Margaret Kilgillen from San Francisco? Yes, fan? yes, I'm picking yes, that up for sure. Yes. Yeah. No, I mean she's amazing. Yeah. Yes, yeah. one of my favorites. Good yeah. that you tapped into that. Yeah, she's very inspirational to me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and she, I can see how if you're from San Francisco, there is a lot of that. Like, because mm -hmm. she just basically made put us all onto the fact, put everybody that wasn't in San Francisco onto the fact that there was a lot of like graphic design painting kind of in the traditional. Yes. Like, 1950 you know right. like Mad Men style advertisement absolutely and absolutely like a lot of illustration and shit yes. like that yes absolutely I love her I love the way that she deals with type in her work yeah the typography is just amazing yeah yeah and, uh, there was a huge show here the street art show here and uh her stuff was probably some of the best in the whole show mm -hmm. uh because she she was really thoughtful I mean I liked her husband's stuff I forget what his name is Barry McGee yeah, Bear McGee. What's his? What's his? Uh, what is he? Twist. Twist. Yeah, I like his stuff, but it's like it's more traditional graffiti style. Mm -hmm. I liked how I, I like that yeah, I she was. It, yeah, I like that she was tagging and she was part of that scene, but she mm -hmm. had her own. She wasn't like she had her. She was drawing from her own cult, from a, a different culture. You know, mm -hmm. like the culture of like hand painted signs. The cult, like mm -hmm. it was really interesting. Um, yeah, approach. Right. Right. And it, and her work um, has such a sense of place. Like it really makes me think of the mission in San Francisco. Yeah. Like yeah. when I see her work, like you know the stores, the signs, the hand painted signs, uh, the the vibe of the mission, especially at that point in time, uh, mm -hmm. like you know the late '90s, early 2000s. Yeah. Um, it's sad. So. I mean, it's I, I, it's sad that like you, that she had to pass. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah, so sad. I wonder as a kid if it's like kind of a burden <laughs> to yeah. know that your mom passed said mm -hmm. you could like survive yeah. yeah you know what i mean oh god that must be that must be like a i can't imagine pretty tough thing to be like oh yeah yeah i can't imagine wow me your mom <laughs> wow well, that's pretty dark yeah uh yeah so um cool any other influences that that are san francisco based that we might not know because we're pretty la focused out here um um, so many, uh, so many, I just, uh, a lot of the artists I showed at my gallery, I liked a lot, uh, mm -hmm. that definitely had influences on my aesthetic and my ideas for the store. Uh, uh, James Barnett was one of them. He did these kitschy, like stencil paintings, uh, that were amazing. They sold so well. I couldn't keep those in stock in that store. <laughs> They're inexpensive little stencil paintings, but. Um, what was the split on the space for uh, sales? It was 50-50. 50-50? Yeah. On, on just the consignment stuff or? Uh, the whole thing. Everything. Straight across the board, yeah. Yeah. That's it's interesting. E easy to keep it that way, like easy to keep track of. But, uh, but, you know, one thing I never tapped on when you were talking about the difficulties of that situation was, you know, being uh, 
being the boss that's paying the bills. I mean, that was, the, that was such a stress that I didn't even anticipate. It was a level of stress that mm-hmm. um, I, I was just shut down in so many ways. I mean, it, it, even, I mean, creatively, I was always turned on, like in the space. I always had ideas of things I wanted to do and it was never dry on creativity, but the stress of having to run it all and do freelance at the same time, it was a really tough yeah, situation. Yeah, hunt, uh, hunt uh, it's just hunting all the time. Hunt yeah, for ca- ca- right, clients, hunt for right. artists. Hunt for customers. Right. And I had like, at one point in time, I had probably like six, more than 60 consigners in the front of the store. So I would have to do inventory and count stuff and like just have responsibility to all these people. And then, you know, all the other bills that you have to juggle, like you know, sales yeah. tax, insurance. It's just, you know, the bills were just coming at me so fast. It was like asteroids <laughs> from every direction. You know? <laughs> and, um, are you still freelancing graphic design? Or are you still doing that kind of stuff? Or are you mostly uh, just living off of art? You know, I do a little bit of it here and there, but I haven't been doing too much since COVID. You since know? COVID. So I still, when I, when I first moved to LA, I still had some, some Bay Area freelance contacts that I was working remotely with. And, you know, since COVID, they've dried up and yeah, I really yeah. didn't get the opportunity to make any, any new ones here in LA. And then COVID happened, so nothing was happening. So, um, and then I got a lot of opportunities from people I knew to do art stuff. And I was doing some Zoom live painting and other things. And it just seemed like one art, fine art thing after another kept nice man. opening up for me. So I just kind of got on a roll with it. And I really wonder if you invited because, direction. if you invited because you already have some business savvy and like know how to operate. Because I, I don't think I, I. There's some artist friends of mine that don't even try <laughs> to sell work, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah. And I'm kind of, I, I, I'm more than anything, that's what I'm uh, like, I mean, harping on is maybe not the right word, but I'm, I'm focused on that because first of all, we could all fucking learn to be a little bit more like Doug. <laughs> 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 because, but, but yeah, I mean, it's interesting. It's an interesting thing to sort of be an artist that makes a living as someone who's never done it. Mm hmm my anxieties on surviving off of it would be uh, getting stuck making a specific kind of work mm-hmm. or anything like that. Not mm-hmm. that that's at all the case, right. you know I mean? And that mm-hmm. can happen and it cannot happen. That's, yeah. that's more of a, that's like, I'm, I, it's a phobia. It's irrational, right? Oh, it's not. I mean, it's, it's very real. I, yeah. I, I worry about that all the time. I mean, I'm, I'm there right now. Really? You know? Okay. How yeah. does that, how do you, pro- how do you push through that? Um, I just keep going, you know, it seems like something always happens that's just, just enough to eke by. Uh, but have and, you done anything where people are like, oh, shit, I hate this. Why don't you go back to how you were doing it? Um, Has that happened to you before? No, I, I, would, I wouldn't say that that. Because that, that happened that to DeCurico. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hadn't heard that. So DeCurico, you know who that is. You, yes. you have a president. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. For the yeah. guests that are at home, he does architectural stuff and whatnot, or he did. Uh, he tried to, uh, go away from that. And then he ended up having to go back to that because no one would buy the other stuff. Oh, okay. But if you go to his fucking apartment and you see it, it's not the saddest story you've ever heard because the apartment is amazing. And it's, <laughs> and it, it's right near the Spanish steps. I, I don't oh. know if it's on, in, in Piazza España, but it's like mm-hmm. right, wow. like it's around the corner from Piazza mm-hmm. España. So, wow. so I mean, making money is not the end of the world. I mean, it, mm-hmm. But I mean, at the same time, it's like the other alternative is that no one gives a shit enough to buy anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I've been more conceptual for a long time, which like, you know, you can price things, but no one's going to buy an $11,000 right. uh, thing because you're yeah. a nobody, <laughs> right. mm-hmm. you know? And uh, so, so it, it, it's a level you got to kind of work up to that, I think, you know, and I'm in the, you know, I'm in a very... Yeah early stage even though i'm kind of later in my life but you know really diving into the full time like art making art making um, Where, do you sell as, from a website do you sell like how do you mm-hmm. how, how what's what's your business so that so that we can emulate it and all <laughs> compete with you and then um, just fucking destroy well, your business i'm trying to just have things go you know i just kind of Diversify. keep hustling and keep doing things so you know the consignment uh, that i have at lux deville is one thing um and so that provide some sort of flow and then being in group shows is another uh selling a piece here and there mm-hmm. helps uh do things together i do do some uh art. you don't have an etsy or anything like that um i do have an etsy for um 
I have some t-shirts and stuff on there and um yeah I get some sales on that too uh I want I want to do more with that I I yeah. uh um I have a lot of uh designs in mind for that but I haven't added them so uh I'm sure if I put more time into that it would yeah it would uh it would pay off and I I would like to find a way to kind of integrate that with Instagram to sell it directly through Instagram I think there's kind of a bit of a disconnect having to go to my Etsy store but uh well, yeah. I mean, we can talk about details <laughs> about that. That, yeah. like, I can I can give you some thoughts on what I've been doing because I mean, basically. But I do think it's interesting because I don't. I think that like when you are, let's say, you've never sold work and you've never had any concept of how to live off of work entirely, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like you don't think of these things. You don't think but it makes sense it's the same thing with the podcast you know like you do have to diversify yeah. you have your affiliate marketing you have your yeah. your other shit like that right yes so um so it's interesting and uh how do you generate traffic just from your instagram mostly and from shows um yeah that instagram has been uh one of my main tools I've, yeah uh and i yeah i could see myself even doing more with instagram like i said i would like to integrate yeah. my store with it um thinking about doing a little more video content that's why i'm glad i got this opportunity to do oh, this yeah, sure. because it's like i want to start talking about my work more or just kind of you know having yeah. more of an open it's the wrong podcast about, for that because we don't yeah. always talk about work yeah, i've noticed we're all over the place here <laughs> yeah but, uh, no i mean <laughs> but it's interesting i do i do find that fascinating the idea of of being able to do that because it's also like you know when you come into the space you don't want to be like hey what do you do but slowly yeah. I've been able to figure out that you're, <laughs> that you're doing okay off of that. Yeah. But, but yeah, I don't think, I think that the diversification of like income sources is really mm -hmm. interesting because yeah. that just goes to show you how much extra work it takes. Yeah. You know, it's mm -hmm. not, you, you, it's right. not like you just go in and clock out, clock in and clock out. You have to network with, the, with these venues. Absolutely. With, with these spaces. And right. then we're, you know, sometimes this venue, this avenue is going to dry up. Well, this one is like more, more fruitful and you just, but you still got to keep spinning all the plates. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And keep working it just keep working, work hard, and keep working. Yeah. And, um, you know, the more work you make I and mean, eventually it will sell and, you know, uh, pop-ups are, are another thing that's been great for me. So I do a lot of pop-ups. I'll do pop-ups at Lux Deville and Echo Park. And in fact, I have one coming up this Saturday. Are you applying and, to the group shows? Are the these are just open calls? Or? Um, I have been, yeah, and I just got in the one at La, at La Luz de Jesus. Oh, okay, cool. And um, so if I see one that I feel like I'm a good fit for, I will apply to it. Cool. Uh, and then, yeah, it's hard to tell with some of those calls what, for entry, though. Some of them seem kind of like scams, and they charge money, and you know, so it's you like, and the, and the work doesn't look that good. So it's like, hmm, you well, got to kind of look through all that stuff. How do you, how do you discern? Stuff. That's a good question, or that's a um, good thing you bring up. Yeah. I'm not uh, patting yeah, myself on the back. Yeah, sometimes I can look, you know, at, at the groups that, that have the big calls for entry like that and then just go to their site and look at the stuff they've shown and be like, oh, it's not, it's not really something that I feel I fit in with. Or So there's no, there's no like, uh, one-stop shop where you can go check. You basically just go through all of these organizations' websites and stuff? Yeah. And yeah, our share LA has been good for me. I've done, you know, I've been in a couple group shows with them, and uh, they're a great organization. I've volunteered and bartending at their parties. And, um, just do great things and bartending yeah. is a fucking good way to meet people <laughs> i'm gonna tell you straight is, up yeah. uh at the bendix building it's the one thing that people always act like they don't want to do but when you do it you're like fucking that's, that's kind of how i <laughs> put right. the show okay <laughs> I maybe I'll, show. maybe i'll come do it sometime. <laughs> yeah no uh yeah i'll just sometimes i'll just sit there and i'll be like hey do you want to be on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> there you go and i'll just like right. it's like one stop some art star standing in front of you yeah yeah well i mean i also usually know a bunch of them and i haven't yeah. seen them in a while and i'll be like oh hey what's up man <laughs> haven't done the show let's do it <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> that's the one thing you get pressured to All be right. like to be my friend do you a get shot pressured. yeah yeah you get pressured into talking about art publicly yeah. and embarrassing yourself publicly <laughs> <laughs> what could be better i have a surprising amount of friends that have no interest in being on the show and i'm like oh you're actually my friend <laughs> <laughs> like i don't have to worry right. about bobby right. uh bobby what's her gentry from uh mana vista project she's like oh no i could never handle that <laughs> and i was like respect because i don't know that i could coach you out of the panic that comes afterwards <laughs> a lot of people panic after doing the show wow uh cool man so then what what uh, have you uh, any ambitions in your pursuits that you haven't necessarily pinned down in terms of like 
the UK, you've got the consignment, you've got the group shows. Is there a next thing? Are you at all trying to be gallery represented? Is that an ambition? Uh, that is an ambition. Yeah, I would okay. love that. Yes. How, 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 what, for somebody who is very far from that, mm -hmm. uh, what are the kind of steps that you would take? You, I'm, I'm, what I'm things that I'm, these, these would be my guesses. You, uh, you're going to uh, show at a lot of group shows. Mm -hmm. You're going to try to sell, have a list of regular customers. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. These... It's basically making an art resume. Okay. Like a... a good CV. Yeah. And then, um, and then have people write about you, your work mm -hmm. and stuff. Yes. Appear on podcasts. Yes. Yes. All of these type of things. Yeah. yeah. The group shows. Um, and uh, from what I've read about this, it's like, you know, seek out galleries. Um, that are of a similar vibe to your work and show work that is of a similar vibe to your work. You know, you don't want to mm. just go knocking on doors of something that's just, there's no connection to, to what you do. Like, you know, yeah. Um, some galleries mostly show abstract work or some galleries show mostly highly you know, conceptual. Work. So are, um, just have to kind of find the right, the right spot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What I, what I like about doing stuff like at Monta Vista is that I feel like even though it's not in and of itself going to help me curate at a fancy gallery or anything like that, mm -hmm. it is something that people are getting to put on their resume mm -hmm. to build towards something like this. Yeah. Which is interesting because then there is, because I always think of like the separation between our art world and like the broader art world, which it doesn't seem like you necessarily think about it that much, you know, because mm -hmm. I mean... I think about it in terms because when I started the show, I was completely disconnected from the art world. I had yeah. like maybe a few friends. I can see that. And then uh, doing the show, I started to, to 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 get a little bit more connected. But I'm still kind of just in the artist run mm -hmm. area of of LA, right? Yeah. Like like. So I am too. Yeah, and so it's but it's interesting the idea of how do you bridge that gap into that next space, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And and I just never really I thought. Honestly, I thought like Monta Vista was just to give people a chance to show, but in this conversation, I'm realizing like, oh no, it actually helps people like build resumes that might help them do careers. Absolutely, stuff, you know? yeah. And so, it's nice to be affiliated with a with an organization like that. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just doing the work. Um, the more work you do, the more people will see, and the more people will believe in you that could potentially represent you. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, the more large impact you can make with the stuff that you do. Do you um, is there? Do you ever stay in on weekends, or are you always all, going? A lot, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So you're I not do. you're not necessarily in face networking as much. These um, days. You're mostly doing doing this through applications because that's a good that's an interesting thing because mm -hmm. a lot of people assume that that's how they do it. They just by show networking by networking like crazy. And, and it is important. Yes, I mean yeah. I should probably do more of that. I could probably work on that. Yeah. A, a little more. Well, I'm not here to uh, chastise you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to observe the things that have been working. We're more yeah. than well, you're more than welcome to take on things from this interview, but I'm not here to stress you out. <laughs> They're like, you are slacking. Man. Oh, shit. I know you, you got to get out there and hustle. Yeah. And so, meanwhile, there's only mingle, one artist in this mingle. room that lives off his art full time. <laughs> no, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. So, cause, cause I do think that like, um, yeah, how the fuck do you even do that? Yeah. You know, and there's mm -hmm. probably so many different ways right. of doing it, but it seems like you actually have the ambition and the focus mm -hmm. and the experience of knowing how selling work to be works to begin with, right? Like mm -hmm. if you haven't sold a lot of shit, you don't know too much about that mm -hmm. world. I'm yeah. assuming. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming that everyone's like me, that mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. And it and it's also a funny thing because I think that people are always surprised when they sell work, but it's probably easier than you think, especially if you're pricing things mm -hmm. adequately. Right. Yeah. That, I think that's a huge part of it is pricing. Um, and then, um, yeah, just pricing and kind of putting something out there that people are interested in, like thinking about what people are going to want or um, what appeals to people, what intrigues people, what inspires people, what makes, mm -hmm. makes them want to put something on their wall. Like, yeah, you know, asking yourself, you know, would I want this? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I always, you know, I always think that, oh, 
that's that's one of the you know one of the things I always think about. It's like what would I want this on my wall? Yeah. So the tattoo test would I have this tattooed on yeah. myself? <laughs> <Is> that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the answer is so. always no because I have no tattoos because <laughs> I'm a pussy and I don't like pain. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and it's tough to decide. I mean, when yeah. it comes to that, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool, man. Well, yeah. Do it like. I don't know. So then. You go out, you go around, you find open calls to submit to. It's, it almost sounds like so simple. <laughs> <laughs> um, it sounds <laughs> simple. Yeah. But there's a lot of like no response. So yeah, that's, you know, that's grinding. one thing that's hard. Yeah. Um, and, um, not even knows in the art world. They don't give you uh, no, a lot that, of times. No, you, no, yeah, you don't get them. I mean, yeah. I've, I flat up like made submissions of stuff that I've comped up and heard no answer to. What do you mean you comped know? up? like made a demonstration of what it would look like. Oh, know, okay. Like a, yeah, yeah. a call for entries for like some kind of public art thing that like, um, like I did a Photoshop version of what it would look like finished and all this stuff and didn't hear anything about, you know, anything back from it. So it's like... What percentage of your practice would you say is uh, centered around admin shit? Um... Percentage wise, uh, like in, yeah, in, maybe in, about 20, 25. So mo so like eighty percent of your time, you're just making work, and then twenty five percent. Like, right. do you do this daily? Do you wake up daily and like check in on that? Do you have a specific day? Like, what's the structure? Because um, you know that this is essentially you're a business, right? Yeah. Right now, so mm -hmm. so like, how do you? I'm trying to make this kind of a business as well, right? right? So I'm mm -hmm. I'm interested in how you structure your days, like yeah. It's all over the place it's all the, it's, yeah there's yeah. just never any structure to it and you know things like this come up like you know, this podcast opportunity yeah. and i need to prepare for that and be ready for that so it's you know there's time in advance that i need to put aside for that so yeah. i never know how these things are going to go and then i'll you know last minute get an opportunity for a pop-up uh, to do a pop-up and i've been doing a lot of pop-ups so that's a lot of work i have to haul a whole tent and i have tables i have gallery walls that i put up and flip files and other things like that that i do so a lot of preparation in that and then to make sure that i have enough stock that's going to look good mm -hmm. and it's not sold down or doesn't strange so yeah it's, yeah it's just i'm constantly juggling things are just that's it it's flying around all over the place so it's not really uh maybe i should put a little more structure in that and maybe oh no I, well, dude i'm not i'm not here to correct <laughs> anything. i'm here to find out yeah. how it's done not not be like, hey you know what i'm undercover boss yeah. here you're fired from your own <laughs> existence but uh, you what know, actually, I, I think you're giving. You're giving. I was some... you, <laughs> and I fired you right now. <laughs> Go ahead. What did you say? Um, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, you were giving me. Uh, oh, you were just giving me ideas. Okay. So uh, it was well, like not, it was like, hey, space. you know, I'm maybe to... I should try to get a little more organized about. Hey, you know, maybe when I with my morning coffee, I should check in on this. And this yeah. And, you know, do that. But I it never seems to like work out that way. Yeah, I always pretend that the reason that I have seven hours average on my screen time <laughs> <laughs> on my phone is because I'm working so hard. <laughs> there you go. Look at my screen time. Hey, look at my screen time. I'm <laughs> on it all the fucking time. <laughs> yeah, I know. Seven Aren't hours, all... that's a fucking, that's a, sometimes, that's I'm almost like... embarrassed to say that out loud because I don't know what anybody else's is, but that's like a full-time job. Right. I'm... Uh -huh. right. <laughs> I know I sent timers on some of my apps and then I eventually turned them off because I'm like, I got tired of snoozing them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. It is a powerful thing. It, it is. It's, it's almost, if I can, w one of the things that I have the hardest time with is when I post and it's going well or it's going poorly, I still am just as invested. Like there's like a physical change inside of me mm -hmm. of caring. Yeah, you know, of being invested yes. in these yeah. numbers and checking oh, these numbers. Absolutely. It's and if like it's going insanity. bad, it stresses me out. And if it's going good, it stresses me out too. But in a different, All like right. different it's flavor. So of manic. You yeah. Can't, like, yeah. Yeah. Mania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, that, it's uh, insane. Do you, does that happen to you with, oh, your, with your Instagram? Absolutely. Yeah. God damn it. Why and just to it? see like what stuff people interact with more than others, and yeah. How many followers are you at right now? Uh. I think probably you got a few. like 1200 1200 okay yeah i had I, I i lost one of my accounts or i lost the what's my thesis one mm -hmm. and uh, uh -huh. 
and that was like at 750 and wow. now and now i'm at i'm now i'm breaking 200 again uh -huh. i'm trying I'm, how did you lose it oh just stupid shit uh i don't actually know they say it was disabled i it wasn't like i had access to it for a really long time but I, through like it's a fucking boring story mm -hmm. but basically i had my two factor authentic authentication set up wrong oh and I told them about it, and then when in that process, like eight days later, I had lost access to the account, and they were mm. saying that it was disabled. I, there's a lot of people that think that it's a fucking accident that's not going to get fixed. There's a uh, lot of people think that I posted something that probably pissed them off. Uh, Possibly both. Wow. Uh, but There's I'm hackers, gonna, too. Mine was hacked for a while, so that was terrible. Well, that's uh, what I'm going to say on my resumes now. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's much better to get hacked than it is to yeah, fucking yeah, uh, get, get uh, thrown out. Yeah, get thrown out. <laughs> Although it's like, what the fuck? Like it, they could told they could have told me so many other things that I would have believed. But hate, like hate mm -hmm. speech and shit oh. like that, you know. And then the other one that was kind of weird was that they were like, we said we disable accounts that like they list a bunch of shit, you know. And some mm -hmm. of them are like really like right. they like put you with the pedophiles, oh, <laughs> you know. They're, ah. they're like they're like uh, oh, the, you know. I, I mean, not not literally. I don't think there was any notice yeah. about like uh pet pet like a uh, child porn or anything like that mm -hmm. but it's like you're harassing people yeah and i'm like yeah i'm inviting them onto the uh -huh. fucking podcast is that yeah. harassment uh -huh. you know and i i guess like technically it could be considered harassment but if someone accepts it's not harassment yeah yeah <laughs> there's consent yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it's not like i like if someone just fucking blows me off i don't go hey fuck you i have feelings man <laughs> i'm just like okay this person has no interest probably yeah. too shy is what i chalk it up to yeah you know mm -hmm. it's not easy to yeah. like, be sociable and yeah and, and like a lot of people i just 100 percent. i just assume that people that don't respond don't want to be on it mm -hmm. so i don't know what, yeah. what, what 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 nightmares have you had with instagram you got hacked uh yeah i got hacked that was terrible it took days and days and days to get control of my account back. yeah i got scammed by like a, a user that i don't know that well saying that they had like a private album that I could look at and um I had to give give them a screenshot of this code that they sent me and I oh. took a screenshot of it so I compromised my two fact factor oh, authentication not that... realizing I was doing that they were like yeah I can't show this on Instagram because they censored it off and blah 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 and I was like oh wow. I was just thinking oh I hate censorship and you know that's kind oh, of why yeah, I read my yeah, mind yeah. and I was like well yeah. as soon as I sent that code it was over and it's yeah. like they had complete control of my account they changed all the contact info i had a a benevolent hacker once hacked my account and i'm saying they're benevolent because i couldn't tell what their intention was and what happened was that i had the same password for my instagram and uh, my email account that it was linked to mm. so i went and i changed the password for the instagram account but they were still changing it mm. and then i finally was like i figured it out and i just changed the yahoo password and then that that killed it that that was the end of it but i was like god damn like they could have totally locked me out just by doing what i did mm -hmm. you know and yeah. like and so that's why i feel like they were just kind of like i think it was like a benevolent hacker kind of being like hey mm -hmm. fuck face <laughs> but out of that, I set up the two-factor authentication the wrong way. That got me fucked. Uh, so worst case scenario that happened with that, they probably, my guess is that, my, my best guess is that they saw the, the, that the account, that there was weird activity on the account because I had sent a thing. They sent me a response and went into my spam folder. So I didn't respond for a week. Mm -hmm. After a week, they started to look at the account and maybe they saw something they didn't like. Uh, it was probably something anti-imperialism. Mm -hmm. that they were like because now that's one of the things that they're cracking down mm. it, i probably also said or it could have also been something about like not being pro vaccine mandates because i didn't uh, really believe uh -huh. that people should be fired from their jobs uh -huh. i didn't think yeah. that was helping anything mm -hmm. uh and and that's it but even though like those are the things that i would think would be the most egregious to their code mm -hmm. but they didn't even say anything wow. about covid or anything like that yeah they always keep it vague whenever they yeah. Never any of those like uh, so you what can't do you call it them. like gig economy apps and stuff like that. They never give you it. They you're, you're right. They just lump you in with all the all the, the other creeps, like, yeah <laughs> all the creeps. Yeah, absolutely. And um, they used to lump in gay people with with pedophiles too. So it's not. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we're in good company. <laughs> yeah. 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 
I actually, I remember my sister, a story of my sister. She was in a lecture at college. Yeah. She's a gen, she's millennial for sure. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they, the guy made a list of like people and put gays and, uh, uh pedophiles in the same. She was like, Hey, what the fuck? Oh my God. <laughs> so it still happens. Oh God. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I know it does. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. But you're not, you're pretty straight presenting, are you? Or, 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 or. I don't know. Do you, have you had any any issues like growing up in, 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 with that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember. Um, I, yeah, I got. Uh, Is that why you're straight presenting now? It might be. You know. You know. Maybe because I remember in middle school, I got I got called names and stuff a lot when I was in middle school. Were you out, or were they were just no, no, no. I mean, I'm, labeling you. Yeah, I mean, they just you know probably because of the way I dressed. And, you know. How did you dress? Uh, it was pretty tough. Pretty disco. Oh, pretty disco. disco. I had like the. <laughs> Did you have the, feathered hair? The fly feathered hair and like you know the disco. <laughs> I forget what era it was in middle yeah. school. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, pretty fly. I actually, went was going to the teen disco then, so it's like. Was know. it punks that were shitting on you? Uh no, it was more like jocks. Actually. Jocks. Yeah. Okay. Because I wasn't like the sporty guy. I was more like the arty kind of. Yeah. Fashion conscious guy, you know what I mean. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I know I can relate. I, as an alternative kid, I definitely had my share of people being like, "Oh, he's gay." Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> but right. it didn't necessarily. I, I, I get it. It doesn't necessarily make. You probably weren't even dressed that flamboyantly. You no, know? not for the time. Not no, at yeah, all. I mean, yeah, you look back at pictures of that stuff. You're like, yeah. Whoa. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't even a candy raver. I was just a raver. I was just a regular <laughs> raver. I can understand if I was wearing rainbow shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah. There was also the Do you remember the skateboard the the skate skater shirt that had the the um rollerblade but with the rainbow flag? Like mm. it, it was just so problematic in the nineties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like <laughs> Yeah. Wow, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I remember I remember that campaign when when people start first started saying like, "Hey, uh that's so Emily," you know, as opposed like to t- t- kind of train train people to not call shit gay <laughs> anymore oh. in like a pejorative. Oh. I had never heard of that. You never I heard that? No. Oh yeah. They were like, "Hey, isn't that Doug?" "Oh man, that's so Doug." <laughs> and Doug's like, "What?" I was like, hey, yeah. Well, and then uh, it then they kind of teach you. And this was like early uh 2010s that it was uh-huh. happening out here in LA. Oh, okay. So that's how fucking recent that shit wow. is. Wow. Yeah. It's wow, not that's even, pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I had a boss at, at, at one of my jobs say, Oh, that's gay. And he goes, Uh, you can't say that anymore, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some stuff is gay though. No, but the, you know. Yeah. So like the well now now that's a Joe Rogan <laughs> bit right I forget what he says is gay but like anyway <laughs> yeah I don't know if I've seen that <laughs> what's your stance on Rogan do you hate him um no, I like him okay cool yeah there you guys go <laughs> <laughs> no it's, yeah. it goes half and half yeah. a, a lot I mean, of the ladies on the show hate him mm-hmm. uh and I can see why it's not yeah. for that it's not right. content made for them uh huh. Yeah, I mean, I haven't dug too deep into his stuff, so I mean, I, I really can't be. Uh, I mean, the, now you're canceled. The, the more main, the, the more. Ha ha! I probably am. <laughs> Please don't. Um, the more what? Um, that I've seen probably the more mainstream of his stuff that he's done. Like I haven't really. I I've seen I've dug into the things that people say. Like one of the things that people call him out for is having the founder of the Proud Boys on, mm. and he had him on when he was the founder of PayPal before oh. the proud boys oh. <laughs> so that one, <laughs> that one's out uh and then there's other ones the 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 vaccine one is the one that i think mm. most recently uh. kind of pissed people off uh. but yeah i didn't know about that one yeah who cares yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. anyway uh. well do you have any stuff that we can plug man um well, let's I mean, see. you have uh, you, people can literally go by his work and help. Him yes, out. yes. Um, the, so uh, yeah, I plug the, the the show right now. Everything but the kitchen sink at uh, La Luz de Jesus and Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, that's up until the end of August. Okay. So I have two pieces in that show, and they're both still available. They're pretty awesome pieces. Uh, and then at Teapop Tea House in North Hollywood, I have um, a full scale show up there, and that's up for another week. 
Uh, so there's a lot of good pieces there, a lot of new pieces in that show. Uh, so, so it's kind of a mix, mix older stuff and new stuff there. Um, that's up for another week. And then your and website, then, cause that's probably, cause these, I, I like to have people plug shows, even though the po- episode is going to come out afterwards. Mm-hmm. So people know that people are doing stuff, mm-hmm. but, uh, the more likely place that people can buy stuff from is going to be your website or your IG, right? Uh, yeah. My IG is probably the best way to contact, to get you. to my content, um, which is, uh, at uh doug d l a d o u g d e e l a um and then i also have a website that has an about page that has a nice list of links to all my stores and other things uh which is just called doug d.com do you have a link tree d e e i don't have a link tree but i did like the about page on my doug d.com okay. site has a list and everything is cool that was the thing that i was going to tell you about later mm-hmm. but i figured i'd figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah maybe that, I should get one. That's not a bad a thing to set up. They're free. Yeah, and then yeah. you can just have have that set up so that people mm-hmm. can click. Especially if you're selling. Yeah, and you and you want to have a more direct way to yeah. do to do like yeah. you can just have. I'll show you how mine is set up. Uh-huh. But thank you so much for coming on the show. Absolutely, uh, it's, it's been, been a pleasure. Uh, definitely, you uh, want to hang out at some point at the the Bendix when we yes, got stuff going yes, on. I'm Introduce there. you around ma- I would to people. Love There's to, a lot of really cool people there. Uh, and uh, yeah co- check us out next week with another artist with another interesting conversation about uh, a bunch of random things and barely a little bit of art <laughs> <laughs> alright great thank you no problem